The 2022 June 28th patch changed banners as we knew them. To honor them in my own way, I used the banner of defense to redo a project of mine from a few years ago. Oh. Many years ago. The highest amount of health. Last time there were a few things I overlooked and also the game has had many changes since. So let's find out if the new maximum is higher than last time by starting from scratch. The first choice is race. Norn is the obvious choice because they are the beefiest. The real choice comes next and is our class. When it comes to health, not all classes are equal. There are three tiers of health, the squishies in the low tier, guardian, thief and elementalist. The everyday adventurers in the medium tier, mesmer, ranger, engineer and revenant. And the absolute units in the high tier, warrior and necromancer. This gives warrior and necromancer a big advantage as they gain the equivalent of an extra 329 vitality over the medium tier and a whopping 757 vitality over the low tier. Aside from the uneven start, not every class has as much access to vitality traits and skills as others. There are two types of traits, ones that give a flat amount and ones that convert a certain percentage of another stat into vitality. The percentage has the highest potential, but they are quite rare. First let's tally all the vitality each class can get from the flat amount traits. Necromancer is the clear winner, but we are not done yet. Now let's add the percentage traits. Thief needs nearly 17,000 power to beat Necromancer. Elementalist needs 10,570 power and condition damage combined to beat Necromancer. Engineer needs 7,500 power to beat Necromancer. And Warrior needs 4,200 power to beat Necromancer. Revenant is a bit special because it increases its own health by 10%. But despite its strong traits, it's never the right choice, because it lacks any vitality skills. There are two types of skills that give vitality. Transforms and sharing. Transforms give a big boost to vitality, and shares are the banners of defense to give 100 vitality to others, and earth shield to give 180 vitality to non-transformed characters. Elementalist has Tornado, which gives an extra 1000 vitality, but that's not nearly enough to beat the Necromancer. Because the Necromancer has access to Lich Form, which gives 1000 vitality for transforming, and 750 for 20 seconds with Grim Spectre. The Warrior beats this though with their Rampage. 2000 vitality is gained by becoming very angry. The Engineer has access to both Tornado and Rampage through Elixir X but falls behind Warrior thanks to the unfair health boost. But there is more to max health than traits and skills, so let's look at each game mode to determine the max health. Let's start with PvP. This one has the least amount of outside factors. The best amulet of choice is Valkyrie. Carrion provides the same amount of vitality, but 300 less power. Some classes gain vitality from power, so we take Valkyrie. Rune choice is Vampirism. It gives 100 vitality and 175 power, but more importantly, an extra 10% health. Flock runes give the same bonus, but it has healing power instead of power. The sigils do not give any stat bonus, so they are not necessary. Because we will be using a transform, we won't be using Earth Shield. We can still use Banner of Defense, however. This adds an extra 100 vitality, or even 150 if it targets a warrior with doubled standards. The choice is between warrior with rampage and doubled standards, or a harbinger with vital persistence and lich form. Thanks to Grim Spectre, lich form adds another 750 vitality, so it almost rivals rampage. The difference between the two classes is only 120 vitality, in Necromancer's favor. A warrior with great fortitude needs 1200 power to even that, which is exactly what the Valkyrie Amulet gives. Add on to that the base 1000 power and the vampire runes, and the warrior is the healthiest in PvP. 
Now that we know our who with what, we need a where. There are two arenas that can give a boost to vitality. The first is Forest of Niflhel. This map has two bosses, Chieftain Uteheim and Svanir. Each gives 50 vitality on defeat for a total of 100 vitality. The other map is Eternal Colosseum. By killing 7 players you can earn the crowd favorite buff. This gives everyone on your side 50 vitality. Every so often your team can capture a powerful artifact. If someone on your side captures the shield, everyone on your side gains 5000 health. Now that we know that, let's get to work. We move to Eternal Colosseum. We got our gear and traits in order. Kill 7 players. Drop a banner of defense. Capture the shield. And get angry. This brings us to an end total of... 5. Before we get into the specifics per class, there are a few transforms everyone has access to. Like transforming into a slippery slubling, which would give you 50,000 HP. The highest I could find was entering the steel warband tank at full health, which will show a number of 157,740 HP. That is the number to beat. Can we get more health than a literal tank? In PvE, there are a lot more things possible than the restrictive PvP. For one, we can now use racial skills. There are six racial transformations that boost vitality. But the one we are looking for is become the bear. In our bear form, we gain a flat vitality bonus of 3000. This levels the difference between warrior and necromancer, giving them both a better transformation. The difference between these classes is now 370 vitality. Meaning, the warrior will have more health if it gains over 3700 power. And this is more attainable than you might think. In PvP, we were limited to a select few amulets. In PvE, there is no selection. There's only Sentinels. Sentinels gives major vitality and minor power. To get the most stats, our gear is Ascendant or Legendary. This means we can fill it with infusions. 18 plus 5 vitality infusions in total. The rune choice is the same as in PvP. Vampirism or Flock. We still pick Vampirism. For Sigils, there's only one choice. A Stacking Sigil. There's only one stacking sigil that increases vitality, Sigil of the Stars, which adds 50 vitality at 25 stacks. As a stacking sigil, it doesn't have to be in our main weapon set. This leaves two slots open for increasing vitality. There are two items that increase vitality, Azurite Orb and Crest of the Shaman. We are wielding a two-handed weapon because it gives one more vitality than two separate weapons. We can't use two of the same orb or crest, so we pick both at once. Foods. There are two foods that increase vitality that I want to focus on. Flatbread or Pactrations give 150 vitality. There's also Jerk Poultry Flatbread Sandwich. After eating a sandwich and killing an enemy, you gain 150 vitality and power for 30 seconds. You can kill something with the sandwich and then switch to the flatbread to get 300 vitality total. For 30 seconds at least. Not all power can be used for Warrior's Great Fortitude. Might, for example, has no effect. But food and temporary buffs do. Keeping this in mind, we can also look for food that temporarily gives an increase in power, like the sandwich. And there are a lot. Each on-kill buff stacks with each other. This means that with some expert sequencing, a warrior can use all of them in quick succession. This adds up to a total of 2170 power from 16 different kinds of food. There's also Jerk Poultry and Nopal Flatbread Sandwich that gives 200 power for 10 seconds after using a healing skill. As for utilities, there are two that indirectly boost vitality. The Halloween Utilities Sharpening Skull and Pumpkin Oil give a boost to vitality after reviving. This means that we have one minute after reviving twice to reach our maximum potential. Aside from those two, there's also Rid of Masterful Strength to give an extra 200 power. 
Ever since End of Dragons came out, players have had access to Jade Belts. Each class can equip one, and they all give a vitality boost depending on the strength of their core. Tier 10 core being the best, and it gives 235 vitality. Having a Jade Belt also allows players to use the Jade Tech defensive protocols scattered around End of Dragons. These give 150 vitality and persist through all open world maps. The offensive variant adds 150 power for the warrior. Speaking of open world maps, the last puzzle piece is to find the best location to reach our maximum potential. One that gives a good vitality or health boost, and with preferably lots of enemies around. There are two maps that give an equivalent boost. Lake Doric and Dragon's End both have a mechanic where you will gain a boost after each event. After 10 events, you will reach the maximum and gain 20% extra health. However, this is not where we will go. We will also be leaving our warrior behind. To reach our maximum potential, we have to go to the Sandswept Isles. To a kindness repaid, to be precise. This story instance starts off with an escort event. A great opportunity to get 25 stacks on our stacking sigil. After the escort, we come to the boss fight. This fight has a few quirks. For one, you can't go down. This means we won't lose our sigil stacks. But we also can't use the Halloween items. There's also an attack that leaves you with one health, no matter how much you had before, making staying at full health a tad difficult. All the spawned enemies also don't count as enemies for on-kill traits and food, meaning that all the power on kill food can be left at home. But the reason we came to this very fight is for after we harm the golem enough. In the last stretch of this fight, we are gifted with the Fury of the Omicron, which, among other things, doubles our health. Despite all the downside of this story instance, the upside is better than the open world maps. It also makes sequencing a bit easier as there is no killing involved. Did I mention you can't go down? Well, that's only during the fight. You can go down before and there is enough time to reach the fury phase after resing to reach the maximum we are looking for. That means we can still use our Halloween consumables. After getting the full 25 star sigil stacks, we come to the boss arena. There, our two companions met their untimely end. We endure the golem's roleplay before resing our friends. This puts the timer on one minute. We burst the golem down to around 30% for the fury phase. Heal to full, place a banner, and transform into a bear. This gives us an end total of... In World vs World, we can recycle our gear from PvE, but all the extras like Jade Bots don't apply. For World vs World, we have the Great Equalizer, the Omega Siege Golem. It gives a whopping 24,000 vitality, and it disables all traits. This levels the playing field for Warrior and Necromancer. This bonus can be increased by training Golem Mastery ability to at least tier 4. Besides the Golem, there are 4 unique buffs that boost our vitality in World vs World. By capturing 3 ruins in any of the Borderlands for a few minutes, your server gains the Bloodlust buff. This can stack up to 3 times, once for each Borderland. The high stack gives 60 vitality, but be warned that it can be taken away at any time. When capturing an objective, a guild can claim it. This provides a guild objective aura. Guild objective aura 7 or 8 add 100 vitality. An upgraded guild can also claim a keep. When the keep gets reinforced, it activates presence of the keep, doubling the guild aura for another 100 vitality. The fourth and last buff is the gatekeeper of all attempts. The one that needs most luck or coordination. Commander's presence. When a server isn't doing too hot in the Eternal Battlegrounds and they lose the structures closest to spawn, one or two NPC commanders spawn. They provide the option to break out and help starting to recapture. Being near these commanders gives a 10 second buff of 500 vitality, every 10 seconds. Having a fully upgraded keep clashes with the requirement of having the commander spawn, but they are not mutually exclusive. 
When a server recaptures the keep without starting the breakout event, it is possible to collect all the buffs, be it on the type timer. Now, before we continue, I want to apologize. I didn't manage to get the absolute maximum. I know, I know, why make a video about the absolute maximum when I haven't even reached it? But the amount of luck and coordination that is required is too much for me. I don't have any friends on my server that can jump in at a moment's notice. Nor do I have had luck when I checked in when I had time to play myself. After weeks of trying, I managed to get this solo run. First, get lucky with the NPC commander event. It was up, so I prepared by creating an Omega Siege Golem and getting 25 star stacks. The stacks can only be gained by killing guards or players, so that can take a while. After that, I glitched a permanent guild objective aura by suiting up inside the aura and then waypoint away. Then I found a group of 5 enemies to start. I ate a jerk poultry sandwich. Pull all enemies and soften them up a bit. Transform into a Lich to use skill 5. And kill all enemies after getting 25 Grim Spectre stacks. Teleport to spawn. Suit up near the NPC commander and eat the flatbread. This is as high as I got. But how can we get higher? First of all, I'm a dumbass and I forgot two vitality infusions. That's already a 10 vitality boost. Secondly, I only had a minor bloodlust buff. With one more player, we could have captured the runes before starting to get the full bonus and thus 30 extra vitality. I was also missing a warrior to provide the defense banner. Technically, you only need one warrior ally to capture the runes and doing the lich sequence. But more people make the start easier. In my attempts, I was missing both Halloween utility buffs. Having two allies be downed or dead near the five enemies gives us these. The buffs only last for a minute, but that is plenty. A keen eye may have noticed that the jerk pull tree didn't activate. That is because, like Sagel stacks, it only activates on guards or players. Guards aren't the best to work with, so it's best to find five peepos to help you out. This makes killing them right at the 25 Grim Spectre stacks easier, as the warrior can instantly kill them with the war banner. Since there are 5 players, you also gain the full 25 star stacks as a bonus. After the peepos are dead, the warrior teleports tier 3 keep and plants a banner of defense. The necromancer moves to spawn to pick up the omega siege golem and the commander's presence buff and then teleports to the keep waypoint to get both the killed objective aura and the presence of the keep. Grim Spectre at full stacks lasts for 15 seconds and Commander's Presence gets applied every 10 seconds. So in theory, the timing fits. But more often than not, you need several tries. If all goes as planned, you will end up with the theoretical maximum of... This is the highest I've gotten. I wanted to do this as a tribute to banners before they were changed. But when one door closes, another opens, and there will be new ways to get the max. What do you mean I forgot a trade? Surely not. It's on a lamentalist. Oh no 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 no. Anvil gives how much?